How's it going, everybody? Uh, doing a soft-spoken gum chewing. What I've been playing vid here today. Um, mostly Xbox One games, oddly enough. And uh, I've been playing some of the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth demo. Which just is, uh... It's Cloud talking to the group at the end of the first, uh, the first part, the remake. And, uh... He's, like, reminiscing about a, a mission he went on with Sephiroth uh, back to his old town, actually, where he grew up, and then you meet Tifa, and they have the piano minigame, which I did, which was decent, interesting, and uh, just some fights. I'll probably play some more of it. I would assume... I don't know if that's the actual beginning of Rebirth, so, like, this, if you play this, you, you, you buy the game, and that's already there. That What you've done already, I don't know, but... I have been jumping on the... Xbox One. Uh, first one here is Siberia 3. I actually beat this uh, game maybe last week. It was good. I wanted to play it because I'd, I'd beaten... Um, what was it called? Siberia... The New World or something? I really like that one. I'm like, you know, I'm going back. I have this one. I've had this one for years. I enjoyed it. Not as good as the other one. And it's not just because graphically... It's funny, like, this was an Xbox One game. I would assume this would have been originally made for PC. I don't know. But, like, graphically, it's fine. But the, the other one is just... The world before. It was in a new world. It was the world before, I think, the other one was called. That one looks a ton better than this one. But your Kate Walker, as usual, uh, you start off in an asylum... And get out of there, and you gotta help the Yukels, I think they're called. This group, these giant ostriches, they migrate every 20 years, and uh, they find you, actually. Well, they find you in the beginning, then you end up in the asylum, I should say. You're in the snow, and you're all messed up. And then the one guy there, like, guide, is also inside the asylum. You gotta get him out. Bad guys are doing stuff. You gotta help them do their migration while you're going along, solving puzzles and shit like that. Standard, uh point-and-click type stuff, but uh, it was a solid game. I actually liked it. I'd probably give it like a 7.5. You know, over, like, this point-and-click game was good, but there were some technical issues in this. Um, and the voice acting was still solid, and, you know, the puzzles are good. They did a better job with making the world before a little user, more user-friendly. This one just, like, throws you in, like... Because I played it, like, oh, you want to play it with tips, or do you want to play it like the standard, you know, the classic point clicking? I want to play the classic, and it's like, oh my god, they don't even like, they didn't even tell me the controls. <laughs> but it's easy enough to figure out. But I was just like, oh shit, I did cheat a few times online when I was stuck because I was getting to a point where I was like, I don't want to sit here for forty-five minutes trying to figure it out. Good achievements in this as well. Um, and then at the end, she gets caught when the group's crossing this bridge, the Eagles, and, uh, I guess they're the, I don't know if they're the Russians, or they're, like, an equivalent, because this is, like, real-world places, but also fake made-up places, so, it's windy out there, but, So the woman who runs the asylums, like in on it with this, uh, this, this like mercenary kind of group. But at the end, they catch you, and I would assume that that you get put in prison, that you wake up in, not wake up in, but you've been in for a little bit in the in the world before. I would think. I don't know. Um, it was a cool game. The music was good. Like I said, good puzzles. Some are gonna rack your brain a bit. Um, solid game. And then I just threw this in. I was also trying to, I'm like, I'm trying to get achievements as well for whatever reason. So I threw in the uh, Ninja Turtles Cowbunga collection, which has all the old school Ninja Turtle games, the one on the NES, arcade ones, the ones that were ported over to the NES, the Super Nintendo, you know, Turtles in Time, the arcade game, Manhattan Project, the Hyperstone Heist, which is Genesis one, the Tournament Fighters one, the fighting game ones. A couple on the GB, uh, the Game Boy 3 that came out on the original Game Boy as well. 
and the original one on the NES as well. It's fun. I also realize because I'm playing through them, and you can do like enhancements before you go into the game. Because I started playing through, I forget. I think it was uh, the Manhattan Manhattan Project. This is gonna take a little bit to beat, maybe like an hour or something. But I realize you can go in some of the games you can actually play on the last level, <laughs> and you beat the game, and it still gives you the achievements. So I was like, you know what? Let's see what games do this. Some even have God mode on, where you're just like one hitting everyone, and it's like. And then I messed around and played some, of the, tried to play some of the games further on. But if you're into the old Ninja Turtle games, this is like an essential to have because it's got it all on there. And those, a lot of those games hold up, honestly. Especially like Turtles in Time and Hyper Stone Heist. Um, you know, really hold up. I think look really nice. Those versions, the 16-bit ones, look gorgeous. Even, even the NES ones look solid. Even still to this day. The Game Boy, I, I played the one, I think it was the second one, and I put it on like the bigger screen with the, with the Game Boy Color filter on it. So if you played it on a Game Boy Color back in the day, it would have a couple of colors in there as well. That was tough. It looked kind of decent, but it was weird. <laughs> but yeah, I said I played a bunch of this. And, uh, it was fun. Like I said, if you're into Ninja Turtles, you're going to like it. Because I had it and I played through Turtles in Time, the um, SNES version, like a while ago. And I threw it back in because I'm going looking at the back backlog of Xbox games to play. Now, this is one where you technically, I guess you'd have to beat every game through to really feel like you've completed it. But it's a fun game. And this is the one I'm playing at the moment. The Sinking City. I'd gotten this one a bit ago. It had to have been maybe two years, maybe even longer. Um, I was here when I got it, so I might have gotten this one in 21. This is actually a game that actually has a nice map. I know I did a... a show and tell on video game maps. I, I can do another one if anybody wants to see another one. I might just do it anyway. I got this from Gameful, I believe. It's like Cole, it's not like Call of Cthulhu, but it is because it's the Cthulhu HP Lovecraft universe. This one's like an open world. Uh, game, you start first and you play as uh, what's his name, Charles Reed. And you go to Oakmont, Massachusetts. After this flood, you go there to help uh, the one guy, I forget his name, Throgmorton, his last name or something. Is, like they have these people, it's like one group looks like they're almost like fish type people, and you find out it's like something to do with the water or some shit. I think they're the Inns Mouths. And, uh, then there's the other guy's group. But you're working for the one guy. He wants to find out what happened to this expedition. The, the city had gotten flooded, so... You know, there's all these, like, creatures. These H.P. Lovecraft-inspired creatures. I would assume Cthulhu makes an appearance at some point. Um, this is a cool game. But it's... It's not the best looking game you're gonna see. It looks decent. Character models are okay. All like some of the case, especially your guy and other guys, because your guy will like, you have the uh, mind's eye vision when you're doing your detective work, which can see a thing, but your little sanity meter will go down. And then when you come across enemies and stuff, you'll start to go down other points. And when you're doing things, you'll get these like weird visions in front of your face and shit. You have these like pills you can take to, to lower the meter and you can craft bullets and for your guns and the first aid stuff, grenades, traps. There's a skill tree where you can buy skills when you level up. You get experience when you go to each location and you have to, if you find all the clues, you'll get more experience. You can just find the key ones 
that help because you have the mind palace, which is kind of cool, where you're branching together parts of the thing to figure it out. And then you can make a choice how you want to go about it. Do you want to help this guy or help that guy? Mm -hmm. I don't know how much that plays into the end game, but... Um, it's cool. The combat's not great. It's not terrible. It's not like... It's probably a little below average, but the, thankfully the enemies are not like bullet sponges or anything. You will fight some humans as well. So they'll go down with the gun quick. And the enemies look alright, you know, they look kind of weird, but they're not, it's not like super detailed. It's kind of cool because parts of the streets are flooded, so you have to like take a hop in a little boat and navigate to another area by boat to get back to dry land. And, uh... You'll be looking at the map a ton in this game. <laughs> and it's cool because it's almost like an old school type game. Like, okay, you have a case and it gives you case clues and this side quest as well. But you're like, oh, uh, so-and-so. You'll talk to somebody who's like, oh, he got attacked and he got hurt. So you're like, oh, okay, I have to go to the hospital now. Go check their records and you have to put in your piece of evidence and then choose between four categories. You only need to choose three. You can only choose three. So like in the hospital, be like, okay patient uh, what is he in for and when what area is he in is he in surgery is he in asylum whatever and, and then you do that right and you get more clues you find out where somebody lives if you go to like city hall you can find out where someone lives um, you go to the newspaper place you'll find stuff there as well you gotta put it in the right things and it's always in the clues you get so it's very old school in that regard I mean there's a lot of just going back and forth in places and the traversal like the traveling and stuff is not fantastic your guy runs slow even on a when you're holding the run button down. But once you start finding the fast travel points, it becomes a lot easier to flow back and forth and stuff. Like I said, you want to look at the map a bunch because if you make a wrong turn, then you're like, ah, oh, crap, I gotta turn around and do this shit. Like I said, there are side quests. I've done a three, I think. Um, and people are doing weird shit in the town. There's like a cult thing going on. There's a lot of Cthulhu stuff. Um, it's actually a really cool game, but it does have issues. This is like the definition to me of like a 6.5 or a 7. It's a solid little game, but like it, it, uh, it can get a little, I mean, it's already kind of getting a little repetitive, but I do like the fact that, you know, you got to find out where people are and stuff and you got to look for your clues and... And, and then, like I said, you have to get to a certain archive and then figure out, okay, what book did they take out or what use this? And you, and you get information from that. And they'll be like, oh, so-and-so is located between Marsh Street and whatever street. And you put your little indicator on the map, you go there, and use your detective vision, and it will show you doors that you can go into and stuff. They usually have little marks on them. Same thing with, like, things you can uh, go into to get crafting supplies, trunks, and, and garbage cans, and suitcases, stuff like that. There's also uh, infested areas where you can go in and get a bunch of shit, but there's a bunch of enemies in there. Um, so you gotta deal with that. Uh, and you can take some hits. It's kind of cool, he takes his little, his, his health pack, he like shoots a needle and you hold it for a minute and he gets his health back. Um, like I said, even your character, he looks like he hasn't slept in days, and he does wake up periodically. You'll wake up back in your hotel room. Like a kind of crazed delusion or whatever. But it's a very bleak game world. <laughs> but it is cool. Like I said, you use that detective mode, the mind's eye. You can find hidden walls and stuff to go through, and then they'll make some kind of creature you'll see will lead you to a thing and stuff. Like I said, your sanity goes down. I did, like, the one side quest involving mirrors, and if you were close to, like, the main mirror, your sanity started to drain really fast. Like I said, you can take the pill things, and they'll boost the meter back up. Um, like I said, there's some choices in there, but I don't know what it's going to, if it leads to anything. Um, that's actually a pretty cool game. I would check it out if you're into kind of survival horror games, but also detective games where you really do have to put in the work. Um, oh, and you also, like, when you're done finding everything in an area or the key evidence, 
you then go through a thing where you like recreate what happened. You see this in games and you got to put the right order it went in and then it goes through and you get more clues from that. But yeah, that's just some stuff I've been playing, going through a little bit of the, whoops, going through a little bit of the uh, Xbox One backlog. And uh, this is just, I'm just grabbing things to play, especially the Xbox. I can grab a few PS5 games and be like, you know what? Let me go back to some of this older shit before I get Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, because once I get that, that's going to take up a lot of my time in terms of my gaming time. So I figure let's see if I can get through this and, and maybe something else. But yeah. Uh, thanks for checking this out, and have a good day.